Live? Yes, we are live now. I'm so sorry. Okay. Okay, yeah, it's live now. Okay, over to you, Claire. Hi, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the global, uh, Horace's Global Meeting Conference 2022. And uh, my name is Claire Chen. I'm honored to be here. Uh, um, I'm a managing partner of the uh, Shangzhe Liten ISOS Consulting Group, and we are a financial uh, advisory and investment management consultancy. Today, we are uh, here uh, to um, be honored to uh, host uh, this, uh, uh, you know, be monitoring to host this event. Today, we're going to talk about sustainability and mega trends from the year of the Asia Tiger. So now, please let me introduce our panelists. The first speaker, uh, let's welcome Sibra Chen, the chairman of Summer Atlantic Capital USA. You have 1.5 minutes. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Claire, for the introduction. So uh, I'm the founder and chairman of Summer Atlantic, uh, and uh, very glad to be here. And it's, you know, like I can't really count how many times I joined the meeting, but it's uh, always a very good way to communicate. So, you know, we are an international asset match pub that help companies, especially in the technology sector, include meta, health tech, and uh, technology in broad uh, to uh, expand internationally into markets such as U.S. and China. Uh, and we help them with, you know, strategic capital need in order to become successful in their international expansion stage, as well as we help them with the manufacturing or regulatory approvals, as well as distributions and sales in the new markets as well. So, you know, we're glad to be here with everyone. Uh, and, uh, you know, like the, 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 it, this is, a, you know, like the, the tiger and uh, it's quite interesting about to speak about today's topic. Uh, you know, like, uh, look at how many black swans we are encountering in mm -hmm. the world right now, right? The, the call we started, uh, you know, uh, like three years ago, almost three years ago, and then uh, the wars, and uh, then we saw a crash down in the stock market as well. So um, it's like many black swans in our uh, lives right now, and it's, a, you know, like a good time to speak about the sustainability mega trends. You have 30 seconds left. <laughs> Thank you. So now let's welcome uh, the Ananda CTO Avinando, the Chief Executive Officer of Wing Group Indonesia. Thank you. Thank you very much, Claire. It's uh, really uh, uh, an honor uh, for me to uh, be speaking in this panel today uh, for the title Sustainability Mega Trends from the Year of the Asian Tiger with uh, everyone in here, with uh, Claire, Sabrina Chen, and also with my friend uh, Toy Siman Sang. Nice to see everyone again. So my name is Ivan. Uh, I'm the director uh, of uh, Ewing Group uh, and also the CEO of the joint venture company in Indonesia, uh, Awina Srigi International. So for, in, uh, for a short introduction about us, so we are very much exposed to the uh, clean energy and also related to the environmental related business for more than uh, 12, 12 years. So what we have been trying to do uh, in particular for these two sectors is to bring uh, in, in investors, to bring technology, and to basically try to open up the market uh, uh, from Indonesia, uh, especially to Japan. And we're also working uh, with uh, uh, European investors and also uh, American investors. Uh, uh, so, we are, And we believe that we are in a really, in a really good uh, time right now to make the energy transition. And, and I think that today's discussion is really relevant uh, for us to see how we can have the same common understanding about how we can really uh, move on uh, to pursue the goals for uh, sustainable development uh, with the ASG investments and to see what are the bottlenecks and hopefully we can discuss and, and ha have some ideas to how we can solve the issues and move forward uh, on these particular uh, important issues, uh, especially with the Black Swan uh, coming up uh, I, uh, and also the, what, already, uh, uh, what we have been facing so far. Uh, with the COVID and uh, uh, geopolitical wars. Uh, so hopefully we can survive and come up with some ideas and work together to move uh, forward. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you, Ivan. Your time's up. So now uh, let's welcome Toshihiro and Toyoshima, the chief executive <laughs> officer. A little bit difficult to pronounce. Well, uh, Toshi is fine. Uh, my name is Toshi Toyoshima. I'm CEO of Mercury Investment, uh, uh, which is a private equity management company. 
uh, set up back in 2005. Uh, we have been in this, this business for uh, 17 years uh, and uh, investing in uh, multiple areas, uh, including uh, buyout or gross capital or to some extent infrastructure. And infrastructure involves uh, renewable energy developmental projects. Uh, we do have around maybe two billion US dollars asset uh, under management, and um, and um, when uh, I started the company, it was back in two thousand five, and I set up Mercury Investment uh, as a kind of cross border investment company uh, after seeing uh, after seeing the global integration uh, under WTO. Uh, China joined WTO in 2001, and it really changed the world. And uh, uh, and obviously, China and India, there's a huge number of people who is looking forward to the better living standards, uh, which means more energy consumption and uh, considering the global sustainability and the environment. Uh, the the uh, after maybe back in 2005, it's already more than 10 years after the collapse of. Uh, East and West, the Cold War regime, and and people believed in the more con concerted, coordinated efforts in sharing the, the 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 benefit of the global integration. At the same time, uh, to take the proper share by each other to control the that, the, the negative side of the development, uh, which is environment. But now, uh, it's already. 17 years since I started uh, the investment with the belief of the global integration. What we are seeing today uh, between Soviet and Ukraine, uh, not Soviet, sorry, uh, Russia and Ukraine, uh, are we going back to, 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 to Cold War regime again or not? And how are we are really uh, going to make the coordination on the negative side of the development uh, when everybody wants to uh, ha thinks they have the right to pass a better life but uh, uh, how, ca how can the burden be shared between developed and developing or the east and the west are we coming go going back to the old regime or not that's something I want to hear from my friends here thank you um, so uh, how about I will repeat that our 10 sessions, what we supposed to discuss. Um, the India and China have promised to be the carbon zero by 2017 before 2016, mm. respect respectively too late for the UN goal for 2050. The other Asian nations also growing their economies have a strong fossil fuel need at present and all are quite depending on the Russian suppliers. So how ecological are their plans to increase nuclear energy? And how will China, India in particular, uh, absorb this million of freedom miners if they transform quickly to um, renewables? What happens to war stability if the Asian nations fail to meet their goal, social and development programs, and continue to impact, import uh, you know, Russians' uh, fossil fuels? So I think we can look it up the UN's a goal, a global roadmap, a carbon zero by 2050, and um, how the China plans to become the carbon you know, neutral by 2060, and how India achieved this uh, zero, a net zero carbon uh, emissions by 2070. So let's have a discussion. Let's uh, see, um, see right? Yeah, uh, very happy to be the first to discuss this. I mean, it's a, again, it's a very interesting topic because <laughs> when we look at uh, the nuclear energy and its environmental impact, you know, the, like, ecology is a very popular world in the past few years. And, uh, you know, the, the, the SDG of the UN uh, to 2050 is actually quite close to us right now since it's already 2022. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, if, so, so I think it's a very tricky question to answer because it really depends on how... Uh, you know, like we are going to use the energy and how, uh, you know, like to what problems we are going to solve and uh, how, you know, like those countries are going to manage the process because, you know, like by and large energies <coughs> have some impacts to the planet and to human, right? Uh, we, we can't really claim, 
you know, any version or any type of the energy, it's 100% eco ecological, right? It all have more than 0% impacts to the environment. So that means uh, if we really need to answer the question of the words, you know, like uh, is the nuclear energy is going to be, you know, how, how damage is going to be uh, towards, uh, you know, like those specific countries, you know, what they are going to do with that. So, so first I would say it depends on how we're going to define ecology and how we're going to use nuclear energy. So you know, if we are considering it from the pollution perspective, it's of course not ecological, right? Since you know nuclear energy usually have uh, a few impacts for uh, you know like the environment and humans, such as uh, where I, I believe everyone knows that you know all of you knows that it's you know nuclear energy produces radioactive pollution with the new use of nuclear power plants. And under most of the situations, the radioactive pollution uh, are small, but can be, uh, you know, very risky if there are any accidents, right? And can cause significant damage to the environment if those accidents occur. Uh, and uh, meanwhile, uh, nuclear energy will require to the consumption of lots of water for cooling the reactors, which sometimes it depends on where you're building those plants, usually in sub suburban areas, right, in every country. So sometimes can be highly risky for people living around there because of, you know, like the use of water is so huge to impact their normal livings of those people living around that plant. And also the nuclear waste, it's a part we cannot ignore. So uh, we're, you know, like most parts of the nuclear waste are harmless. But, uh, you know, according to the data we can find, uh, roughly about 3% of those nuclear waste, even though the, the number is small, so, but we cannot, you know, like mm -hmm. ignore uh, such a huge number as compared to how much nuclear energy the, the, the population is consuming right now. So even 3% is a small number, it's, you, uh, it's counting something, right? 3% are highly radioactive and sometimes can last for a lifetime and can be very harmful to humans and the environment. Mm -hmm. So from, you know, this part, this perspective, it could be very, uh, you know, not that friend, friendly to the environment. But if we are using the nuclear energy to produce electricity, and then from that perspective, that could be uh, relatively ecological. So mm. Nuclear energy, actually, Amis, I think, you know, probably you guys know that, Amis, very little CO2 as compared to traditional ways to produce electricity. And, uh, you know, like I, I can't tell the exact number, but uh, the level of CO2 uh, nuclear energy is producing when, uh, you know, like making electricity is similar to wind power, which is quite, uh, you know, like friendly to the uh, environment. And it's three to four times less than solar energy. So the productivity, we can say it's highly productive for using, you know, like, nuclear energy to produce electricity. And this won't cause anything towards the global warming situation. So, you know, like from this perspective, it's relatively, uh, I would say friendly to uh, the environment. So really it's a tricky question, depends on how we are going to define it. And in terms of, you know, like the, the next question towards how, how China and India in particular is going to absorb millions of the miners, they transform quickly to renewables. So, you know, like China and India are, are relatively policy-driven countries as compared to the United States, where uh, the government relies significantly, let's make China as, as an example. So the, the government actually relies significantly on the policies to transform the economy, which means under this situation, if China uh, is planning to transform significantly in the next 20 years, let's make an example, where's a renewable sec uh, sector. And then the policy will shift to this sector to create new jobs and transform manners to the new positions to adapt to the new situation. So, I mean, it's a long way to go, but uh, that's the government usually would react to such reaction. Uh, and uh, if what if, you know, the Asian nations fail to meet their broad social and development programs and continue to import Russian fossil fuels? I mean, it's a, it's a tricky question to answer as well, because, uh, you know, the first thing I would say is, uh, do we really need to connect those two things together? So if we think about it this way, it's, of course, very risky if Asian countries fail to meet 
the broad social and development programs as the world is so connected right now. But this does not have to be related to importing activities from Russia. I mean, ecology is a critical part in the long-term prosperity of humans on this planet, but uh, thus it is mm -hmm. related to stability. But Asian countries, uh, of course, should work together with the rest of the world to achieve relevant social goals. Mm -hmm. What about the import activities from Russia? So, so you know, if we will this objective, politics, politics, economy is economy, does not have to be that related to each other. Otherwise, you know, like, what's the difference for us right now with compared to 50 years ago? And the situation could be even worse. Are you muted? You're on mute. Clear? Clear. We can you hear can... you. Are you You're muted? Clear, uh, we cannot hear you. You are on mute. You are, you seem to be on mute. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe if I may jump to comment or yeah. Yeah, Ivan, uh, maybe, maybe you, you, you can comment and, and uh, maybe uh, we should also invite the people participating in the floor. Uh, yeah, yeah, why not? Why not? Yeah, if I, I well, just, uh, I don't know, uh, just make us some, some comments about what uh, 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 Sebra Chen uh, uh, said just now. I, I, I believe, well, I think first and foremost, I, I believe that uh, technology can solve many of our problems in the world, you know, uh, and, and when it comes to nuclear power plant, uh, well, the fact of the matter that is that some countries are there still relying and and still, I mean, like uh, from, and I think it's going to be in that particular situation onwards uh, from nuclear energy, and it's increasing. Uh, the fact, uh, for example, like uh, France, you know, seventy five percent of their energy is from right. nuclear power plant, and in India, I mean, actually, I just had a meeting before our session today. I talked with one of the largest uh, trading company uh, in Japan, and they said to me that there is an opportunity. Uh, of supplying the rare earth elements uh, coming from Indonesia to India because India is, you know, basically trying to uh, increasing their nuclear power plant, you know. And and the fact of the matter is that China, they're able to grow their industry in a very, very significant way. One of it is because, of course, there's the three Georges Dam, but I think the uh, the other part is because of the nuclear power plant that they're massively increasing, uh, I think, over uh, one or two decades or so. And the fact of the matter is that uh, this is also becoming like a growing attention, even from the Indonesian side mm. of things, uh, because now uh, we try to see how uh, the Indonesian, the, basically the Indonesian government already have the decision uh, to see how we can make industrialization uh, from the rare earth uh, materials. And somehow uh, one, uh, we are also sort of involved in this particular industry. So... Um, as, uh, but of course, in the other way around, uh, we need to see uh, the security and the safety issues, as what uh, Chen uh, described just now. Uh, and uh, and but honestly, uh, uh, I think uh, I think uh, there there is a, the effort to solve this problem is quite strong. Uh, but I, but I think from the Japanese landscape, maybe it's a particular different. Maybe Toyama San can further highlight about this matter. But as far as our discussion with some mm -hmm. utility companies in Japan, honestly speaking, they want to restart the nuclear power plant as soon as possible because basically it's affecting to their balance sheet. And I think uh, the industry is also demanding the real, more reliable and right. more cheaper power resource. So I guess... Uh, um, you know, uh, it's a it's a it's a quite an interesting situation with the yeah. geopolitical uh, situ mm -hmm. uh, that we are facing right now. How this will affect the supply chain? How this affect the nuclear pumps and the clean energy transition? So, maybe Toshima san over yeah. to you. Okay. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, let me first uh, follow up on the discussion regarding nuclear. Well, uh, it's about the priority. And Korea do have the unpleasant side uh, by products and, and uh, various uh, risks and, and regional envi environmental issues involved. But uh, uh, so it's about the priority to really reduce the uh, usage of the, the, the fossil fuel uh, and reduce ca carbon emission. Well, uh, by and large, uh, I, I think nuclear has an advantage. And and of course, there has been the discussion of Germany's, Germans are really uh, 
uh, stopping all the nuclear, but in reality, they, they have been dependent on Russian gas and using uh, French nuclear. And, and, and eventually, I, I, I think there's no way uh, for Europeans, uh, if they are so serious to uh, uh, derive carbon zero, they, they, they got to go back to nuclear. And then in India, Indonesia, China, uh, we cannot, uh, even if we do have psychological uh, resistance uh, to, for the usage of the nuclear, these governments and the political leaders have no intention to stop the expansion of the usage of the nuclear. So uh, eventually, a uh, nuclear uh, will become one of the driving force uh, in, in terms of reducing the carbon emission. Uh, but two unpleasant byproducts, uh, one is high-level uh, radioactive waste. Uh, it has to be tackled by the advance of the uh, technology. But the another one is plutonium and the control of uh, which can be used for the nuclear weapon. So uh, the proliferation of the nuclear power plant, uh, which we cannot stop already, we know that under the politics. But how do we control the assure the safe usage of the 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 the, the, the plutonium, the side side product? That, that that is the issue of the nuclear side. And uh, let me move on to another topic, uh, which is about the global cooperation uh, in how to deal with the em 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 environment. And the difficulty of uh, environment uh, is represented uh, in MRV. Uh, M is monitoring, and R is reporting, and V is verification. So, um, and so uh, the the uh, uh, the separate uh, first mentioned the definition is so important, and the definition uh, firstly has to be domestic definition. But uh, what we are talking about international cooperation. So, so uh, there's a scheme, of course, but uh, enforceability and and monitoring is such an issue. And how do we define what counts uh, for the carbon credit? Uh, because there's no consensus. Uh, EU is, of course, uh, advanced uh, in in carbon trading. But uh, and also U.S. or Japan is doing the carbon trading under their own mechanism in a small a small scale. But uh, recently, uh, me measuring what has been used is relatively easy. But uh, measuring what has been saved or what has not been used is so difficult. Uh, I I remember it was in, in Indonesian uh, forestry program uh, which claimed big amount of carbon credit, but uh, the actual uh, uh, extinction. The speed of the forestry was uh, far less than uh, it was reported. So, so the carbon credit was given uh, in the excess amount, which is, I, I think, traded in Europe. So, so uh, when you cannot even know how much gas trading is taking place between Russia and other countries, how can we really trace all these numbers? And how can we enforce uh, these obligations uh, from the viewpoint of the developed world to the developing world? So, so I, 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 I think the, uh, the mechanism, the idea is very good. And I, I, I'm a believer of global integration. But uh, under the current uh, geopolitical environment, I am quite pessimistic that the current regime will survive. But people can promise what what we are doing 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 seventy years from now. I uh, uh, and and uh, I I can say this, and I can bet my life. Uh, if if the checking point is seventy uh, fifty years from now, I, I I'm sure I'm not so, uh, living at that timing. So, <laughs> uh, but um, the well, important well, point what 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 we can do right now. Yeah. Okay. Oh, we will. Uh, yeah, we uh, yeah sorry, voice. yes. But uh, should we invite some comment from the participants? Yes, yes. Anyone would like to raise something? We can give the mic. Yeah, Claire, we're losing your voice. <laughs> or maybe she, she, you can try to rejoin so you know your voice might be back. Or maybe, I, I don't know, maybe she muted from her computer. Mm -hmm. Anyway, yeah, no. yeah, maybe Jim, Thomas, or Cyprian, you want to make some comments? We can give the mic to you. Uh, yeah, um, maybe just uh, commenting to Tashimasam, maybe just to fill the time uh, because mm. we have a limited time. I, I guess right. uh, what we really need, and especially while well, considering that 
uh, well, the fact of the matter is that uh, the reliance uh, with the nuclear is in- inevitable. That that's how I see. Mm. Uh, and because the fact of the matter that all the countries that grow strongly in terms of their industrial uh, mm. growth is basically all of them uh, based either with the large scale hydropower or la- large scale nuclear. I think that's uh, uh, you know do, do what have been uh, what we have been experiencing so far. So I guess. Uh, I think we need to go back to the reality where uh, definitely we need to aim for the net zero carbon emission. And I think uh, as of now, uh, we don't know what will happen in the next five years or 10 years. Uh, But the thing is, uh, nuclear still play a very, very significant portion. And the thing is how we can make a more better governance. uh, I believe Mm -hmm. uh, it is necessary to manage the utilization of the nuclear power plant, Mm -hmm. uh, especially, uh, you know, within the nu- within the countries that do have operating nuclear power plants and also how to support uh countries that uh you know about to grow or about to build their first mm-hmm. few uh, nuclear power plants for example like indonesia you know uh because you know the, the, the there's so many information that needs to be digested by the policy makers out there and sometimes the confusion to really find the best way to you know, to basically make the first ever uh, nuclear power plant, for example. Yes. So, so in, in in that aspect, uh, there is IAEA, mm-hmm. uh, which is a specialized uh, international organization to mm-hmm. monitor the nuclear, and and of course the inspection of IAEA is always has always been the issue in North Korea or in Iran. But mm-hmm. uh, I I think accepting the transparency uh, regarding the inspection by IAEA and how to really non-politicize IAEA and make right. it more scientific and transparent uh, organization. I, I think that is something that uh, United Nations, I, if they feel ashamed of their current governance, uh, at least uh, in WTO or IAEA kind of stuff, uh, they should be more transparent, they should be more effective. And and the country should be allowed to increase the nuclear utilization of nuclear only when they uh, grant 100% access to the uh, nuclear related uh, site. Right. And, and of course, separation from from the military and, and, and bringing in some kind of civilian control is needed. Maybe Chen, you have something? To right. I, mean, yeah. I mean, you know, like it's an interesting discussion. And I mean, uh, it's we, we all speak about, uh, you know, right now the nuclear energy can cannot be 100 percent replaced by it. it's still a very productive way uh, to produce lots of, you know, electricity as well as, you know, different sort of usages. So, uh, I mean, it, it's really about, you know, like how are we going to manage the downside and the risk? You know, attached with it so so you know like countries i believe you know japan china uh most of the countries know even though you know like the government now from the official level know how to manage the risk but uh, when they are indeed building uh the plants in different suburban locations how are you manage uh you know like the, the process of all the workers in the process right to to you know minimize the risk and the energy waste and the pollutions produced being produced during that process, especially uh, the waste, the energy waste that could be very detrimental, right? The three percent waste. Yeah. So the education would be an important part to implement into the process to give into you know all the workers who have access to that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think in my opinion, if I may jump into that, is that we need a more proactive uh, stance when it comes to the promotion of the nuclear power plant. So not only just about monitoring and uh, managing the risk, but it's about, you know, uh, because especially if I'm talking from, uh, if I'm using my Indonesian uh, glass or point of view, we are struggling to actually even to build the first uh, ever nuclear power plant, you know. And, and 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 the thing is, we have to juggle between how we have to manage the risk of the waste and all that. But the thing is, we don't even have the uh, right uh, policy in place when it comes to us able to build the first ever uh, nuclear power plant. So uh, I, I think that what we need is a, is a more proactive stance to work with, uh, you know, uh, yeah, maybe with countries like China or Japan, you know, that have successful case uh, uh, when it comes to implementation of a nuclear to see how 
uh, because all in all, in the end, what we're trying to aim is about how we can uh, achieve the net zero carbon emission. And the fact of the matter is that nuclear uh, plays a, a significant uh, role uh, to achieve that. So, uh, but of course, you know, uh, we need to uh, also in, the, in parallel trying to see uh, some other ways to do mm-hmm. uh, when it comes to pursue the carbon emission. Adjustment. But the fact of the matter, we cannot uh, go away, uh, I think, uh, from nuclear. So it's about how we can do it uh, and how we can do it right from the start. And that's why we need more proactive stance from people, from countries that have experience doing so. And this is something that we are very much, uh, especially from the Indonesian point of view, is what we needed uh, for now to achieve that net zero carbon emission. Yeah, that's my mm-hmm. comment. Mm. <laughs> yeah, uh, sorry, Claire, we cannot uh, hear Claire, you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we are so sorry. Yeah, or maybe you can uh, type, type in. in the chat. Yeah, you can type in. Yeah. yeah. Can't you type? Yeah. Maybe you mm-hmm. can type. She cannot hear. Because we can't hear you. Yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, you, I, 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 want to say something? <laughs> yeah. Well, I I think uh, we uh, on the similar page uh, regarding the uh, nuclear, we cannot stop that. So how to control the downside uh, is mm. the, the key on that part. Mm. But still, being said that a uh, nuclear can be only uh, control and manage uh, for the mostly for the power generation uh, in a mega plant. Uh, so for the daily lives, uh, like the mobility or the some 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 kind of uh, as a uh, usage of the energies, uh, uh, we we still need to consider what to do with the current carbon-based or the fossil fuel-based uh, energy consumption patterns. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. I, I, yeah. I, I want to yeah. add one more thing. Is you know, even though we can cannot, you know, like the, the only thing we can do is manage the risk and downside. And meanwhile, you know, like the, from the art development side, R and D side, we can keep you know start to develop more hydro energy. You know, like mm. as productive, as efficient. Uh, well, but the uh, hydro energy doesn't have the uh, mm. o- also have the downside, like a, right. a construction of the dam or yeah. exactly. I mean, no, no energy at least until now is going to produce mm. no downside, right? So <laughs> that's true. It's just a development. Well, Road. The, poli- the right, political right. frustration is uh, like a China, India, or many uh, country who still have a big room for development in the future. See the this the, the global protocol or of uh, carbon zero commitment as if the 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 comp- conspiracy of the developed countries to pressure them uh, for more burden, uh, while uh, U.S. people or European people ha- has actually being the sources of the emission in the past centuries <laughs> and, and uh, spending the extravagant life. How can they pressure the other non, uh, still underdeveloping countries to, to uh, spend the humble life? Uh, maybe that kind of sentiment. Uh, they don't want to be ruled by the rules uh, just set by US and Europe. There's such kind of sentiment among. Well, uh, this is my feeling uh, because I was I used to work with the World Bank, and this kind of, of reaction uh, was so common. But uh, uh, we need to overcome that. Hmm. Yeah, I I I I have one question and maybe just one comment. I I feel that there should be more responsibility, especially from the G7 uh, countries, uh, to really you know bring the right resources, uh, especially to help the developing countries to make the energy transition. Because the fact of the matter is that we're still struggling to actually even uh, to, to, to change uh, uh, from the affordable fossil fuel that we have right now to convert it into the cleaner energy uh, with the lesser carbon emission. Because the, the thing is, what we do if we want to increase uh, the energy price, then the, the political risk is there, and nobody's want to take that risk. Especially now in Indonesia, there's gonna be like a election, the big election for the president in the next two years. So how 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 to how to ensure that we can achieve that carbon uh, emission reduction and energy transition if uh, we don't have the right uh, necessary support? 
uh, uh, given the circumstances in terms of the economical situations uh, that we have uh, right now. So I guess, you know, this is something that needs to be thought really uh, more deeply from the developing countries. For example, there's a commitment for the 100 billion US dollar. I know that Japan is putting uh, the Asian Energy Transition Fund. Like, uh, so mm-hmm. there's some money is uh, already being uh, committed, but it's about how we can really actually bring those resources to the place where the growth is there. And then we can uh, pursue the uh, energy transition. And I have actually one question uh, for, for Toshima Sang, if I may. Yes, I, yes, yes. I, I, w- I want to know your honest opinion about the, the hydrogen. I mean, I know that Japan is really, you know, put some serious consideration for hydrogen. So, but um. I, I want to know what is your honest opinion about hydrogen? Do you see that this is actually the way to go for Japan? And, would, uh, and is it already in the right track? Or, or so, how do you see hydrogen? In, and seeing it from also uh, the, uh, you know, uh, Japan is uh, uh, relying uh, much on nuclear and now they have to think on how they need to find the right uh, net zero emissions strategy to achieve that. Uh, well, uh, uh, actually, uh, I, I'm no expert to, to correctly respond to you. Mm-hmm. But um, uh, what I think is important is there has to be various ways. You cannot just define the only justice way. Uh, for example, uh, uh, when we were discussing about the energy efficiency, originally the Prius of Toyota mm. was mm. the hybrid vehicle was considered as quite uh, environmentally friendly uh, vehicle and, and, and many Hollywood uh, celebrities uh, mm. took a ride on Toyota Prius, pretending right. they are very environmentally conscious. But then still uh, it is consuming small amount of fossil fuel gas so uh, the new standard is that uh, german insisted all the steel produce is using uh, fossil fuel so it should not qualify uh, for the uh, energy friendly or, or should not be granted any any credit uh, toyota is uh, also uh, saying well, maybe there should be the uh, use, more usage of the hydrogen but uh, uh, then uh, there's a group of people who's uh, uh, downplaying that the, the important thing is but uh, if there's a definition arbitrarily set to make certain group more advantageous against the others and if you deny the other pass who's still investing and putting effort that's not productive there should be many ways but eventually uh, which one is better need to be contested and tested monitored measured uh, that that part is important so so uh, my my short answer is uh, you cannot justify only one justice there are many ways to to interpret what is good right 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 I have an additional question to Toy Semasa, but maybe Chen, you want to make any comments? Sure. Uh, what's the question again? Oh, no, no, I have a question. I have another question to Toy Semasa, right. uh, but uh, do you have any comments? Maybe, you know, uh, I mean, just I, giving I, you the opportunity. For now, I'm fine. I don't know if you have any further questions for me. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, so what's next? Yeah. Yeah. So, how about hydrogen? Maybe, maybe you have any point of view about hydrogen. Do you do you, yeah. do, you, do, you do you have any some knowledge about uh, hydrogen, especially from your place? Or how how does it? Uh, well, work well, I, I mean, it's not as widely spread use as you know what fossil. I mean, you know, nuclear energy we're we're doing right now, and it's mm-hmm. similar level uh, actually in terms of the productivity. Mm-hmm. Productivity mm-hmm. is actually at the mm-hmm. similar level to nuclear energy. Mm-hmm. So that, that's why, you know, like, but people are keep developing and, uh, you know, like researching on uh, the hydro energy yeah. and types of the hydro energy to create new types of hydro energy to be more, you know, like, let's say uh, friendly to the environment, you know, less pollutions and uh, to have more productivity to actually mm. can be a potential, I, I won't say replacement for nuclear energy, but can be you know, some substitute to that when people mm-hmm. are considering that. But it's a long research process, to be honest. So, of course. <laughs> so, uh, the time is, uh, yeah, for, yeah, yeah, we had spent. Uh, one short question yeah, 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 to yeah, 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 yes, uh, yes, There's going to be the upper house election this year. Uh, ah, uh, yeah, so, yeah, I, yeah, just, yeah. I just want to know what is your prediction and, and how does the, that will affect with the energy policy? Do you think there's going to be significant changes after the election? Uh, no, but I, I, I think because of the uh, geopolitical instability, the, mm. uh, under 
such circumstances, the conservative parties mm. Uh, mm. tend to uh, win the election. So right. uh, in Japan, uh, liberal democratic party will prevail. Mm. I, I, I think, uh, well, uh, many of the, uh, like the socialist, uh, so the demo social democratic party, uh, oh, yeah. they, 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 they have been more supporter of Russia in the past. So. <laughs> right, 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 right. Uh, yeah. The sentiment is the, the uh, conservative will prevail this year, mm. but uh, it could happen with the U.S. as well. The mm. Trump supported candidate won the, 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 the regional election. Right, right. I see. Yeah. I see. But I see. we got to be careful about uh, about the dividing of the yeah, international right, uh, right. alliance. Yes, I see. So energy policy will just go as what already being. Yes, uh, but uh, but uh, I I I think to show certain commitment to the in, in the international society, I I, I think uh, Abe mm. uh, had uh, committed uh, a little bit too much, and it coming back to us as a big obligation uh, uh, for Japan. And, and but uh, it it is to a certain extent it is the obligation for the developed economy to share the burden of the global environment. But uh, right. if if the other country do not care about that, mm -hmm. then it it, it 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 will really <clears throat> uh, frustrate everybody. So so the international coordination and, and verification or monitoring uh, is so important. But right, if right. you if you are asking any burden on the people, uh, and at the same time the government need to make sure the international foundation is also working and all the other participants are also uh, fulfilling. That is right. the condition upon which the government pledges big amount of money. Right, right. I think we're about running out of time. Yeah. So I guess maybe Clear. we need to wrap Sorry, it up. We missed uh, you. Yeah. Clear? Me up, but... Yeah. Or maybe. We can uh, send, send some few words to close. <laughs> yeah, maybe Chen, you want to go first <laughs> to close? Well, it's it's a great topic for us to discuss today. I mean, there is no standard answer for this topic. And, uh, you know, since all the energies have the side effects, but the only thing we can work together is to, uh, you know, like to keep developing new roles towards, mm -hmm. you know, like to, to giving more productivities and to having less, you know, consumption towards the pollutions. So, that's yes, uh, transparency. Yes. Okay. Great. <laughs> we need to push transparency. And for me, I think uh, there's a good momentum for us to uh, gather to solve our problems, especially for the uh, head of the states, uh, G20 this year in Indonesia, and also actually next year going to be the presidency or chairmanship of Indonesia for ASEAN. So uh, using these momentums, I believe, I hope that uh, we can really, uh, you know, uh, uh, realistic with the problem that we see, uh, how we solve the health problem, the energy problem, and the geopolitical problem. So hopefully, you know, uh, uh, things can be sort of, uh, uh, you know, the governance and the role of the game, the new supply chain for the transition uh, will be uh, placed, uh, and then we can really uh, put things into action. So that's my hope. Thank you very much for great, the, great. the uh, today. Hope to see you guys. See you guys yeah. soon. Thank you very bye. much. Bye. Yeah. Bye bye. Bye, clear. The guy clear. Yeah. Okay. Bye bye. Hmm.